Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Well, today we're finally getting to the fourth Need for Speed game for the original Sony PlayStation. This is a game that I've owned for many years. I think I picked this up on one of those bargain bin type things at GameStop years and years ago, years and years and years ago. Um, and I just never played it. I've never played this game. So we're going to experience it. This will be the first time I'm playing it. Uh, we're going to experience that together. I am playing on my uh, PlayStation 2, which um, I've explained all that before, but basically I just wanted to try to play the game for the first time using actual hardware, not the emulation from the PlayStation 3. PlayStation 3 is great. Love the way it plays PlayStation 1 games, but um, I got a bunch of PS2 games that I'm going to be getting to in the not too distant future, so I figured I'll go ahead and switch over to the PS PS2 which plays PlayStation 1 games through actual hardware. It's funny because um, the PlayStation 2, if you don't know this, when you play PlayStation 1 games, it physically switches over everything to the PlayStation 1 hardware. So, like, for example, for my PlayStation 2, I actually do have it. I have the McBoot, the free McBoot thing set up on a memory card, and I have a hard drive installed on it with a whole bunch of games. Um but I also own a bunch of retail games and stuff like that, but it won't let you play PlayStation one games that way. Uh, because the PlayStation one games don't actually run on PlayStation two hardware. There's a PlayStation one in the PlayStation two, if that makes any sense. And that hardware kicks on when you play PS one games. So anyway, you might find that interesting. You might not, but I just figured I'd <laughs> just mention it. Oh, anyway, I guess I'm a little nervous because like I said, I've never played this game. I don't really know what to expect from it. I don't know how it compares to part three. Part three has always been my favorite PlayStation need for speed game. I just spent many, many hours running from the cops and having a good time playing, uh, you know, hot pursuit PlayStation three. I mean, uh, <laughs> hot pursuit <laughs> need for speed three on the PlayStation. So, um, yeah, we're going to play some high stakes. We're going to see what this is like. I I don't know. So let's just jump in. I put the disc in. It's loading right now. And we'll switch over and play Need for Speed High Stakes. Here we go. Make sure I turn on the analog control. Here we go. Electronic arts. We'll let this intro run for a minute because I, I I've never seen this before. It's interesting comparing this to Need for Speed 3 because they really did a lot of work on Need for Speed 3 to polish it up and make it look, you know, really cool. This is heavily, this is all CGI right here. This is uh, interesting. game came out in 1999 for the PlayStation and in 99 I had uh, moved on to the Dreamcast so that's one of the reasons I never played it. So they are calling it Need for Speed 4. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I didn't know that. All right. Need for Speed High Stakes. 
nice bluish kind of uh, title screen there. It's cool looking. Okay, let's see what we have. Game options. Audio. Yep, that's set how we want. Okay. Always want to make sure I put Dolby on. Love that. Display. Let's see what we have for display. Speedometer. Miles per hour. Display map. Name. Okay. Controllers. Okay, it's that's cool. So it's basically the same setup as what we're used to. That's good. Oh yeah, now we get rumble. That's nice. Okay, very cool. Put in my username. Save me from having to do this over and over. Okay. Memory card. Oh, because I'm using a PlayStation 2. That's right. Let me get my memory card loaded. Forget you have to switch these memory cards out. There we go. It's funny because, like, um, you can move data to a PS2 memory card. And then you can move it back to a PS1 memory card. You just can't use the PS2 memory card to to load it and save it during the game. It's kind of interesting. Okay. All right, let's see. Trophy room? Oh, that's cool. Okay, one player. I don't know if this is only a one player game or if you have to plug a second controller in to get it to show it two player. I'm not sure. Okay, test drive. Single race. Hot pursuit. So this continues the hot pursuit. That's cool. Tournament and special events. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's start with a single race. And we will go with the full grid beginner let's see what we have for tracks cool looking menu system it's all 3d with the track and everything that's really cool inner park okay so it looks like we're gonna get three tracks to start with We're going to start with Germany, France, and Canada. <laughs> Canada. And that's all we get to start. So we'll start with Germany. Okay. Let's set our car. Transmission. Okay. Oh, damage. You can get damage now. That's interesting. Car dealer. Buy a car. Do I have any money to buy a car? Oh, I do have 20,000. Okay, so I can buy a car. BMW. Camaro. Graphics have definitely taken a step up. 
the detail in the cars is really nice. That's like basically the same as like uh, Gran Turismo. Look at that. That's a lot more detailed. Now, I don't know if it'll be like that during the game, but it definitely is nice right here. And I think we'll go with the Camaro and we'll just stick with that color and everything. We'll buy that. Oh, I can't afford that yet. It's 22. I have 20. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, well, I guess we're going to go with something. We'll go with the BMW. That's fine. Yes, we'll do the BMW. Okay, and I think we can do upgrades on our car too. That's nice. Okay, so let's race. The only thing I don't like about that menu is the words keep scrolling off. So it's a little, you'd be like, what am I about to click on? <laughs> a little weird. Okay, this track looks like it's going to be a little complicated, but uh, maybe it won't be too bad. It's first track, so... You would think it would be a little simpler than that, but maybe this game is going to be a little harder than the other ones. Oh, nice, nice graphics. Yep. Three, two, one, go. Very nice. And the rumble is definitely kicking in. Okay. A lot of detail, high color and those textures and nice lighting effects. Very nice lighting effects, actually. A little bit of uh, sun flare there. The shadowing. Everything's really cool looking. Yeah, this is a big upgrade in graphics, for sure. I love the way they do the shadows and the colors for the lighting. And it's nice. Looks really cool. Frame rate is about on par so far with the Need for Speed 3. I have to say, I think so far of the Need for Speed games that I've played on PlayStation, the first one has the best frame rate, believe it or not. Frame rates are good on these other ones, but uh, that first Need for Speed has a really good frame rate. graphics are definitely not as advanced as anything like this on that first one but still nice draw distance too really you can see really far down the track you can see those uh, windmills really far down there that was really cool oh get back on the track uh. yeah, again the shadows look really nice the lighting is really nice in this game so far Let's see how this tunnel looks oh yeah that's cool music sounds good too oh look at way up on the sidewalk there hit the brakes a little bit sooner on that one street lights that's cool looking man I wish I had played this I've had this for years and I've never played it <laughs> why why have I never played this it's really good Me and my daughter used to go to GameStops and just pick up all kinds of cheap-ass uh, PlayStation 1 games. So there's a bunch of them that I've had for years and I just have never gotten around to playing. This is one of them. the final lap fourth place okay it's 
switch up the camera view here, see if the frame rate gets any better. And it does get a little bit better in this view usually. Seems like it's better in this one too. And for some reason, I will also say in every single Need for Speed game that I've played on the PlayStation or Saturn or 3DO, whatever, uh, if you're in this view, it seems like your car controls better. And I don't know, maybe that's, uh, I don't know, maybe that's just because of the perspective. Good God, man, right through that. I don't know, but it does seem like it controls better. Although the downside is you can't see nearly as far down the track, so <laughs> it's a catch-22. Frame rate is a little bit better in this view, though. Looks like they've done away with the cockpit view where you have the steering wheel and everything. That's just not even in this. Yeah, but the detail of your car is so much higher. You actually have a real rear windshield and front windshield and windows. You can see the interior of your car. I was pressing in the <laughs> pressing in the thumb stick and it honks the horn. I was like, what? why am I honking? Oh, that's why. Yeah, the detail is a lot better. The reflections are still there. Everything's nice. Very high detail. This game came out the same year as Ridge Racer Type 4. So if you want to compare this, I guess, to Ridge Racer Type 4, that would be pretty fair. If you do that, though, I think you're going to say... I mean, that's hard to beat. <laughs> it's hard to beat that game. Uh, yeah. Ridge Racer 4 was uh, phenomenal. Oh, he wiped out. And the frame rate on that game is just, is just amazing. That's, a, that's one of my all-time favorite PS1 racing games. Um, actually... It's funny because I haven't spent That's as much time with it as I would like. The, the Ridge Racer, I spent the most time with the first Ridge Racer and then Rage Racer. Um, Ridge Racer Revolution, I rented it a couple of times, Three, but I didn't really spend two, that much time with it. One, it's really good though. Go. But uh, Ridge Racer Type 4, again, it came out in 99 and I moved on to the Dreamcast, so I, don't, I didn't play it as much as I as I have played some of the other ones but it is amazing it is really good so this just automatically shows you your replay at the end of the track that's pretty cool you don't have to like go into like manually play the replay it's interesting okay Let's try Hot Pursuit. Solo and Duel, okay. Solo, Beginner. Oh, I see, so Solo is gonna be just me running from the cops, right? Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. That's what it seems like. We'll try this in France. See, that looks a lot simpler right there. And we'll stick with our BMW for now. I don't know how to pronounce that. Root, uh, Adonf, Adonf. I don't know how you say it. I like how it shows you your little music in the bottom Three, left there. Two, That's cool. One, go. Oh, 
Yeah, it looks like I'm not actually racing anybody. I'm just going through the track and I'm gonna deal with the cops. That's interesting. There they are. Unit 38 to HQ in pursuit of the BMW C3. Find the overpass. All available units. This is HQ. Oh man. So I'm in France, and they have the French uh, police sirens, but they are definitely not French police. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. Stop your car! <laughs> we spit in your general direction! play the uh, PAL version of this game probably to get the authentic experience. <laughs> Actual roadblock. Unit 25 to HQ. The roadblock was ineffective. Roger that. The subject is still at large. Please continue your search. So there's, there's no other traffic. It's just me and the cops. It's interesting. Beautiful landscape, but the frame rate is getting a little sluggish. They are really letting you know ahead of time what to look out for. Copy. This is HQ to all available units. 223 is set up. Oh crap. Well, that's not gonna help. This is unit 223 to HQ. He's wrecked. Requesting a wrecker and an ambulance. Okay. Well, I didn't get hit by the spikes, but I took myself out. Three, two, one. Okay, one player. Let's try Hot Pursuit one more time. But we'll do the duel. Beginner. And we'll do... Canada. You can set up all the options here. Oh, there's your traffic option. Okay, we want traffic. We'll do weather on. We'll leave it on daytime. We'll try night on the next one. Let's see how this goes. Um, let's see if we can buy something. Maybe, I don't know if I can buy anything. No, I don't think so. Camaro. Oh, okay. It'll just let me do it here. Okay, well, that's cool. We can just set our car here. I guess it depends on what mode you're playing, to, like what you're able to do. There's a Porsche 911. 
There's the, the, the Diablo. There we go. All right, let's set that to red. Let's try that. Okay, cool. Hopefully it doesn't split my screen. I don't like unnecessary split screens. Some games will make you do that. There's a lot of really cool Super Nintendo racing games that unfortunately force you to have a split screen. I hate that. I have some really good F like F1 and, and different types of racing games on Super Nintendo, but I uh, don't want to play all of them because of that. Okay, here we go. No, no split screen. That's good. Yeah, it's going to be a little harder to control probably with the weather. So now we have... Oh boy. Yeah, now we have traffic... And police. I'm gonna change to this view. Oh crap! I'm all over the place. Okay. Let's see if I can. I'm not gonna be able to see ahead of me. Yeah, frame rate is pretty bad. That is not what I would call a smooth frame rate. Obviously, this game chose to provide more detail and sacrificed the frame rate because this is a pretty sluggish frame rate. Oh, come on. Come on. They've raised the stakes <laughs> for the detail of the game and sacrificed the smoothness. Why have I stopped? What is going on? Why did I stop? Forty-three. The subject is spotted driving a blue Z3 that was weird. at Hillshire Woods. Don't know why that happened. Deployed. Do you have any idea how fast you were going back there? I'm giving you a ticket. Strange. County, this is forty-six. The suspect is spotted driving a blue Z3. Maybe there's just some kind of freak thing. I don't know what that was. County, that was this weird. is fifty-two. I can't keep up. Ten four. Or I may have accidentally gone into neutral and not realized it. I don't really know. That's strange. Hurry up! You're way behind! It's the final lap! Yeah, no kidding I'm way behind. I don't even think you could play this. The framework is so bad. It's really hard to control. 
I mean, it's the weather and everything also, but... Oh, my gosh. There's a lot of upgrades. There's a lot of upgrades, but there's some problems with this game. I'm going to be fair, though. I'm going to play a little more here and see if I can figure out. Maybe it's just a combination of the, the weather effects and I have traffic on and it's also high stakes and I'm also competing. I don't know. Let me let me see. We'll do, we'll just do a single race and full grid. We'll do that same track again and we'll make sure the weather is off and we'll try that. See if, they, see if it's any better. I want to use the same car. Oh, it's not going to let me select. That's interesting. Because I'm doing single race, I actually have to buy the cars. Okay, well, we'll just race. That's weird. Frame rate still seems pretty slow this year. It is easier to control without the weather effects though, that's for sure. Much easier to control.
think you can get on that track. Maybe. No, <laughs> you can't. And I'm about to get hit by this train. I had to find out. <laughs> uh. In last place, it's the final lap. Yeah, yeah. Force feedback actually feels really good. It's a lot of variation. It's not just, you know, random shaking. It changes, uh, you know, a lot depending on what's happening. The way they do that map in the bottom right is really not ideal. It's not that helpful. I like how they did it in the other one where it was a little more zoom, zoomed in. You could see a little more detail as far as what was happening around you. That's your best lap. You play sport. You gotta see what night driving looks Congratulations. like. Congratulations! You've got a top time for this track. Okay, one player. What are the special events? Huh. Okay. So this is how you can earn money. That's interesting. Okay, let's try that. I don't have a sufficient... Can oh, I can't even join yet. I have to fully upgrade the BMW. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. grid, beginner, let's see, go back to France, let's try night driving, see what that looks like. See if we can upgrade this car. 
I don't have any money, so I guess I can't. <laughs> okay. Well, then let's race. Oh, this is cool. You actually get lights and stuff. Three, That's cool. Two, That's what was wrong one, with the night driving go. on Need for Speed 3 was the only light was your headlights. It's a similar type of effect here as far as your headlights go. It looks pretty cool. But now we do have lights on the sides of the roads. Hopefully that'll help us keep from crashing so much. I mean, I gotta say, it does look pretty good for the PS1. That, it's pretty cool. Hopefully the frame rate doesn't chug too bad. Oh man, I ran right into that. When the frame rate gets low, it makes it really hard to adjust your steering. And there's no way I could play this in this mode like this. I'm, I'm gonna try, let's see how it goes. I can't see far enough ahead of me. You get spurts of, of smoother frame rate though. I bet this game would run a lot better on one of the emulators that lets you overclock the CPU, like Duck Station or something like that. This game would probably run really good. Since the frame rate is like basically dependent on that sort of thing. What I, what I do like is, yes, it's night, but they still let you see a little bit of the track that's not being illuminated by your headlights or anything. It seems like in Need for Speed 3, it was like a lot darker if your lights weren't hitting it. And then having those illuminated areas, that helps quite a bit. Just to give you like a frame of reference. You're in fifth place. It's the final lap. There's probably no way I could do this in Hot Pursuit, but it would look really cool with the cops lights and everything.
cops are just way too aggressive though you know there's like too many of them and they're just way too aggressive not a rant. <laughs> you play sport. I thought it was a rant. <laughs> uh, well, never mind. Three, two. Okay. trophy room that's where you get trophies from the tournament and the special events so that's cool so they give you quite a bit of replay stuff here and reasons to uh to do that let's go through the tournament we'll try it anyway oh there's different tournaments look at this You can win a bunch of money from these things. Oh, it's gonna let you pick probably different cars depending on what tournament you're in. GT racing. Closed circuit tracks. Let's see what that looks like. kind of car we can get. Do I have to buy a car for this? I don't have any money. So I can't do this. Okay, I see. So you have to get money to be able to afford the cars to be able to compete in the different types of uh, races. That's interesting. All right. Well, let's see here. What's the easiest, cheapest one? This one, Worldwide Roadster Classic. Let's see if it'll let me in that one. Yes, I can do this one. Okay, so let's do it. So there's there's actually a lot of replay of uh, uh, ability with this game then, because you're going to be having to buy the different cars to be able to compete in the different races and championships. So that's pretty cool. And then you can upgrade the cars and that'll let you compete in those special events. I just wish the frame rate was better. That's my Three, biggest gripe. Two, one, go. Because visually it looks fantastic. It sounds great. The rumble's great. It controls good. I actually don't have any problems with how it controls. I just, my biggest issue is just the frame rate.
And if you're playing like this, the frame rate's fine, you know, it's not a big deal. It's just if you want to play those modes where you have like weather effects and hot pursuit or you get too many cars on the screen, then it starts to chug. And some of the tracks are better than others so far as far as frame rate's concerned. I think if you played this a lot though, you would get used to the frame rate. It wouldn't be as big a deal. It's just that I've been playing so many of these games. I'm comparing them directly, you know? Oh, there's an alter alternate way that'll open for some other mode. I really do like the graphics though. The sky, the detail, the stuff on the in the scenery, you know. It, it's good. It's a good looking game. Well, this championship seems like it's not going to be as difficult. I'm already in first place. So that's good. I mean, you want a game that has like different levels of difficulty depending on how much you play and how far you get and stuff like that. Some, sometimes racing games can just be impossibly difficult right from the beginning. It really just turns you off from wanting to even try to play it. And then there's some games that are so easy, you really don't even feel like you're being challenged. I think this is a good mix. Place. It's the final lap. Oh yeah. Just hold on to it. Sometimes I, I notice like it seems like maybe I'm wrong about this, but it seems like in the last lap some of the cars will speed up. They'll actually start doing better. I love racing games. The PS1 had so many good racing games. Not just racing games, but like car games, like Destruction Derby, Destruction Derby 2. I love those. And then the Wipeout games and so many great racing and car games. And vehicle games like uh, oh no really oh my gosh oh my gosh I can't believe I just did that huh. this is why I try not to talk and play games at the same time because <laughs> I cannot do two things at once
Am I still gonna get first? If I still get first, then that's pretty damn easy. I'm sure it'll ramp up as you continue in the tournament. Wow. You won the race. That'll work. So you just build up money and then you can buy new cars and you can upgrade your cars. And uh, yeah, there's seems like a, quite a bit of replayability and a lot of fun to be had in this. Um, I'm just going to let the, uh, see what it does. Okay. Let the replay go. I, li I like how it does the automatic replay. That's actually pretty cool. Instead of making you like wait while it loads a replay. That's pretty cool. Need for Speed High Stakes, the fourth of the Need for Speed games for the PlayStation 1. There's one more. There's actually one more that we've got to look at. And it's called Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. And I think it came out for the PlayStation and also for like the Dreamcast. I'm not sure what all it was on, but we'll look at that in the next video. So for this one, it's a great game, except the frame rate does seem to be a problem, but there's a tremendous amount of improved detail. The graphics are better. There's a, there's a lot of options for ways you can play the game. There's tournaments and special events and tons of stuff you can do. And it also has the police chases and stuff, which unfortunately are not as fun because the, the frame rate chugs quite a bit. But I'm very curious to see what happens in the next Need for Speed, the last one for the PlayStation 1. So, guys, if you're interested, check out that video. It'll be coming soon. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, just let me know. And I'm going to wrap this video up here. There's a lot more I could do. I could keep going in this tournament and play this like for hours on end probably. But um, yeah, that frame rate's just kind of, I'm, I, I know I'm harping on that. I know I am, but I'm anxious to see the next one. I'm just anxious to see the next one. So this is a cool game. And I think back in the day, you could have a lot of enjoyment from this. And you probably still can even today. But it might not be the one you would prefer to spend your time on. So, even though it is beautiful. Alright, I'm going to shut up. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back soon, and I will talk to you later.